Kenya's Ministry of Health estimates that about 42,000 new cancer cases are reported each year. With this, the burden of cancer is on the rise for the patient and the families. My name is Dr. Masi Korir, and on this episode of Health Digest, our health and science reporter Sada Hassan speaks to a lady who seeks to change the experiences of people living with cancer as they go about seeking treatment for chemotherapy and radiotherapy. A bright Sunday morning, the men and women are hopeful, seated in this church compound St. Catherine of Siena along Kileleshua. Paraded in front of them is merchandise that they intend to sell to the faithfuls once they walk out of the morning mass. They all look well, but underneath are scars from cancer. Norbert Kamau has survived skin cancer. He tells me that 12 years have passed since his last battle. We move further into the villages in Mwimoto area. Here, Lady Hope Wellness Institute sits. This is the home for cancer patients. Many have passed through this facility and gone back to their homes to spread the gospel of managing cancer. The founder, Veronica Mwangi, a mother of two. Lady Hope Wellness Institute started a shelter home back in 2011 out of need to accommodate patients undergoing treatment at Kenyatta who are sleeping on benches and who needed a place to sleep and food as they underwent treatment. She says that since she started the facility, men and women who end up here have their hope restored. They eventually return to their families with a message that cancer is not a death sentence. Skola Mudoni, a 50-year-old woman and a mother to seven, has seen it all and conquered the worst. In 2016 November, she discovered that she had cervical cancer. Breeding in Kaidere, Mpaka, Mesiwatano, 2017. Hakini, nikuwa tu na peberea, mahospitali, kidogo, kidogo, dispensary. Hakini, wakuwe, wana, erewa, nidini. Kaifu, yuhidi, nibidi. Wagina wali kuwa nasema ni hormones, ni hormono ni imbalance. Wagina wali kuwa nasema, wagina ni growth. Waifu wa hakuwa wanajua ni nini. Ni kuwa tunapatiwa dawa. Ni kaedelea tunakufinyika, kufinyika. Lakini wakati mmoja ni kaeda hospital igine ya private. Kwa sababu siku hiyo ni kuwa ni mebridi sana. Nikitoka kibarua, najua raifu yagu inilikuwa narea watoto na fibarua. Kueda fibarua kwa wenyewe. Kwa hifo nilikuwa sina gufu. Siku hiyo nilikuwa natoka kwa saba, nikabridi sana. Kwa hifo ikanibidi nieda kwa private igine, ilikuwa bari kidogo. Tukaeda na hii piki piki. Kueda, diyo alinipima huyo kijana, kijana mdogo tu. Hali nipima, hakaona pegine ni kona shida. Haka niabia, ninaona wewe kona shida frani. Haka nipima kwa hiyo wiki. Haka niabia, hata nipima kwa hiyo wiki, ili apate shida kamiri. Kwa hivyo, tukaperekana, tukaperekana. Haka nituma nieda hospitali igine huko ijinia, ili nipigwa picture. Kwa hivyo, nikaeda, nikapigwa picture huko. Hiyo picture haikuwa nyesa kitu. Kwa hivyo, nikabiwa kukiwa zazde, nikuja nione daktari mkuu. Kwa hivyo, hiyo daktari mkuu akakuja, akanipima. Tukaeda nae maternity. Akanipima, akaniabia, we ukona sida kubwa sana. Kwa sababu, nimeona ukona safi kwa kansa. She feared the worst. Her children, some who were in primary school and one in secondary, will be left with no one to watch over them. Nikaeda nyubani, nikaeresa buwana yagu, vile mabo yiko. Hakini haku, yani huyo daktari, hali niyabia niyede hitha kijabi ama sentimeri. Hakini tulikuwa hatuna pesa. 
Kamwabia siwezi pata pesa ya kijabi. Hivyo ni taeda sentimili. Sentimili ni lahisi kidogo. Hivyo jumatatu ijayo ni kaeda sentimili. Kueda sentimili, eh, mwili wagu kakua uh, ulikuwa hayo na gufu. Hivyo ni kabiwa na da, iyo, iyo daktari. Lasima ni, ni, ni raso uko. Ni karaso uko. Eh, kuraso uko ni kuwa sina damu. Kwa hivyo ni kabiwa Uyo bwana angu akaambiwa atafuta watu wa kutolewa damu. Point tatu. Akaenda nyumbani akatafuta watu. Keso hii ingine ni kanini? Kawe kwa damu. Kwa kwa damu keso hii ingine ilikuwa ni torewe uterus. Lakini hisi kutolewa. Daktari wa yani yule daktari mtarajiwa wa kunitoa akaambiwa amekosa. Lakini si yani ni Mungu tu alikuwa na taka nitoke huko juu naona biopsy sikuwa nimetolewa na ni rasma mtu awe ametolewa biopsy ili hiyo nyeso rasma ni nini kwa hivyo wakanituma nini huko na kudu general nikaenda huko kwenda huko kufika huko daktari wakagoma <coughs> nika kaa huko siku kama tano wakanini ni waka niruhusu niende nyumbani kwa sababu mgomo umekuwa kubwa wa wa madaktari Scola stayed home for a long time as she did not have any means to pay the private hospital bills. Her first child, who was now 25 years and married in Old Kalau, was worried as she did not know how to help her ailing mother. Akatabika sana, akaenda mpaka kwa daktari mwingine huko Old Kalau. Akamwambia shida yangu. Akamwambia mama aligojeka na hatuna namna na hatuna pesa. Sasa nitamsaidia aje. Uyo daktari wa JM anaitwa Rusi akamwambia kuja na yeye mandi <coughs> tukaenda na yeye kwenda na yeye dio kitu kama saa kumi na moja hivi daktari mkubwa akakuja tukaenda na yeye huko theta akanitoa biopsy na ikatumwa huko Nyahururu she stayed home for a month awaiting results, but the disease was still progressing. The results later showed that she had stage 3 cervical cancer and she was advised to go to Kenyatta National Hospital to seek treatment. A few kilometers from this facility is another village where the men reside. We meet Crispus Katana and his wife Pauline Kandiki Katana. Crispus, a father of three, was diagnosed with adenoid cystic carcinoma of right maxilla and has just completed treatment. Chemotherapy. <laughs> Nafula, 
Ada tu berdiri aja kamera tu nama ni sampai satu nak dia apa tu berdiri. He talked to well wishers and neighbors whom through their contributions he was able to get enough money for bus tickets to Nairobi. Ayat aku jauh aku aku jatuh nak dia aku mana orang tu nak watch orang kata aku nanti. Saya mahu pergi jauh tu ni kamera aku pergi kat tu bisu tu nak ni aku boleh jauh tu ni. Aku jatuh nak dia aku. Ali aku anda, bukan sama ni anda, lulus juga lulus jaya, bukan lulus. Ali apa ni, baca, bukan sama ni anda, aku juga lulus jaya. Ali anda lulus kaya dan, buat juga kerja dan. Bukan sekurang kurangnya masih tu berbagai tu, atau na, ada yang pernah aku lulus baik di kawah aku na. Tapi itu kalau dia baca kerja, dia tak kau melukis lagi dia kerja lah. ドアに出てドアに出てドアに出てドアに出てドアに出てドアに出てドアに出てドアに出てドアに出てドアに出てドアに出てドアに出てドアに出てドアに出てドアに出てドアに出てドアに出てドアに出てドアに出てドアに出
even when they have their normal periods, they don't want to talk about it. But this lady, when she bred the first time, she knew there was something wrong. She told her daughter-in-law and they went to hospital. In all Karao, she was diagnosed with stage one cervical cancer. And since that nurse knew about my work, she sent her to me. She didn't know Nairobi, but she decided she'll come. She came, met me, and we started her treatment. That December 2016, the Kenyatta National Hospital, doctors were on strike. So we had to go take her to a private hospital. We took her to Texas, later to St. Mary's. We later took her to Kikuyu. But all along, they were just delaying. And even one of the doctors told her, her with her age, she can't be taken to theater. But we later got a doctor at Gaishajiro Hospital who operated on her, her uterus was removed. And later on, she came back to the facility. And after recovering from the surgery, we took her to Texas Hospital where she was done 30 sessions of radiotherapy. And by that time, she even could take herself to the hospital. She had the fighting spirit and her story inspires the rest of the group very well because they say if a 73 year old fought cancer why not them if she went through all those radiotherapy sessions without breaking there was no time she didn't have enough blood so it's a story that inspires the young and the old and along the way when she was about to start her treatment others were sent from Orkalao and they got encouraged by her story now she's 79 year old. She still comes here when we have big functions like our upcoming walk on 29th. She'll be here to encourage others and to tell others that they can also make it. She's our main trainer for basket making. She weaves very, very well. But when she came, she, didn't, she wasn't remembering that she can weave. We gave her sweaters to make uh, with knitting needles. She struggled, made something, but later she told us she remembered that as a girl, she had done weaving. Does Veronica choose which patients to take in and whom not to? I ask her. Uh, mostly our patients we get by word of mouth. Like now, that patient at Ol Karau or the nurse who had sent her, when they see other needy ones who are unable to come to Kenyatta, they contact me and I support. Uh, the second way of identifying is from Kenyatta. We are working closely with the social office at Kenyatta. When a patient goes to the social office, they, ask, they assess them and see whether they are really, really needy. So for the needy, they call me and ask me whether they have, I have room for them. So there are quite a number of them that have come through Kenyatta Hospital. When Scholar was referred to Kenyatta National Hospital, she didn't know where to start from. She thought that she would die waiting in line to get treatment. Shocked and heartbroken, she went back home until the doctor from Olkalao called to ask her of her whereabouts and connected her to the Lady Hope Wellness Center. She was then able to get the scan done and finish 25 sessions of radiotherapy and five of chemotherapy. <laughs> Tulikuwa na mkutano kwa wama, wa, watu wengi walikuwa wamekuja hapa hiyo support group na ilinifurahia sana kwa sababu <coughs> eh nilikumbuka kusona sasa tukaanza kusona mafurana mimi ni expert wa kusona mafurana kwa hivyo nikaanza kusona <coughs> kwa hivyo sikuwa na stress ya nyumbani she now feels okay and her clinic visits show she's free from cancer. The center purchased a cow and her fortune doubled later on. She can now pay fees for her children. For Christmas, things are looking up. He is sad though that his relatives forgot about him. When he calls home, they don't respond. At first, they will pick up, but now they even switch off their phones. <laughs> I 
Cecilia Mudoni, a mother of three, is the caregiver at this center. Her spiritual background makes it easy for her to connect with the men and women and offer them support. Unapatanga wakati mwingine. Acha niseme kuna wanaume, kuna wanawake. Sasa wakati wameingia, ni lazima ufuatilie mtu, ujue shida yake kabisa ni gani. Juu kuna wengine unapatanga huwa nasahau, kuna wengine wanatumia dawa na ni lazima ufuate ujue kabisa kabisa. Yaani unachukua detox yake kwanza ndio ujue chenye anaendelea ile matibabu yenye anaendelea nayo hivyo kwa hivyo ni lazima uwe kumfuatilia kama anakunywa dawa na tena mnakumkumbusha kwenda hospitali hivyo mjuu mm, tunapataga wengine wako chini kabisa hata mtu unaona hata kukumbuka kama mzigine lazima mkumbushe mtu lazima akiingia ni jaribu kumuelewa mm, kila mtu wako na mawazo yake na wengi ni wazazi kwa hivyo mtu wako na niseme kama vile mtu alikuwa kwake mtu wako na sheria zake na nini kwa hivyo akikuja hapa lazima uemuelewe ndio aweze kuingia na akae hata mimi nimfundishe kukaa na wengine juu kwa bomba kwa hii bomba tunakaa watu wa kabila tofauti watu wametoka bali bali na ni lazima mtu aelewe mwingine the center survives on well wishes who contribute financially to enable them function on from day to day. And funding is our main issue for now because as people struggle with the epidemic, the corona, people are not able to give as much as they were giving before. But most of those who give are just, we call them friends of Lady Hope because most of them don't give us organizations. They do it as individuals. There is the church at St. Catherine of Siena, where I, I fellowship. Most of those people have been with us as a project. They support me even with food for the patients. Some of them pay rent for the accommodation facility. And I've seen that they are really, really willing to support the patients. And the patients also get counseling from the priests. And that's where we also meet for social psycho support. Hardest part of the treatment is chemo and radiotherapy. They are very, very draining because once a patient comes from the hospital, they'll be vomiting, they won't have appetite, and it's a little, little draining because without eating, treatment cannot continue. Some of them have to, to break the treatment, which is not good. It's like going back to square one. Yes, and another thing is the fads. NHIF, I'm paying for them, but it only covers about 70% of the treatment, which is a, a, a huge charge because like the ones I house here, even consultation fee, I have to pay for them. Recently, KNH increased from, from 650 to, to 1150, a whole 500 on top, which is very hard for the patients to get. So those who are not in Lady Hope, they even get to Kenyatta and they go back home because they can't raise an extra 500. So financial and then the treatment itself is draining. Despite these challenges, there is a promise of better future where these men and women who have survived cancer have a firm belief that someday soon they will head back to their homes telling a different story. For the future, I want to give hope to many, many more so that they can go back to their grassroots and save many, many others from the cancer situation. And we can only achieve that if Lady Hope got a permanent home. Here, since it's lento, we can't do much. We can't farm, we can't put pottery. So if we got our own plot, we build, and then we have a bigger home where even the support groups can be taking place here. They can be able to encourage many more as we undertake skills, even in farming, there are so many modern skills which can help them back at home. But without space, we can't. Mutu anakuwa sawa. Akipata treatment, unarudi sawa. Na kansa inapona. Kwa sababu mimi nimepona. To people out there with cancer patients, I would want to say there is hope. 
embrace your patient, give them hope, show them love, uh, show them acceptance. The burden of cancer is dire in the country and for families who have patients living with it, bear the financial, emotional and social struggles that come with it. But for this particular group, some have lived with cancer for over 10 years and they're now giving hope to the society. Saad Hassan, KTN News in Nairobi.